Has it ever happened to you that when you have sent someone your GitHub repository and instructed them that you need to do this, this, these steps to run it and they're just not able to run it and then you'll have to say it runs on my machine. To avoid this situation, we have something called Docker where you can simply send them your Docker image and they can run your app or whatever they're trying to run with just one command. Let me show you. So let's first understand what is Docker and what does Dockerizing your React app means. So let's search Docker. And let's click on get started. I'm gonna go to the docs. And yeah, here it is. So Docker is an open source platform for developing, shipping and running applications. So basically Docker wraps your app and all of the things needed to run your app in form of an image or maybe a container you can say. So it's basically your a box that contains your app and everything that it needs to run. So let's see how we can use Docker to containerize our React app and we can just send our React app to anyone. They just have to run one command and they can run your app just like that. But before we do that, hit that subscribe button right now if you want to see more such videos like this because you won't find content like this anywhere else on YouTube. So first of all, first thing first we need to install Docker. So let's click on get Docker and Docker desktop for Windows because I'm working on Windows right now. So let's click on Docker desktop for Windows. So yep, it's downloaded. Let's click on the installer. And as you can see, I have already installed Docker in my system. So it's telling me that existing installation is up to date. So I'm going to close it, but you can go on and install Docker. If you're having some problems, you can go through this documentation simply. So let's see if our Docker is successfully installed or not. So I'll say Docker dash dash version dash dash version. Yep, you see Docker has successfully installed and after installing Docker, try to restart VS code. And let's see if uh, we have Docker desktop over here. Yep, there it is. Cool then. And now over here, simply I'm gonna clone one of my projects. So this is essentially a greetings app that I've created in this tutorial over here. And if you want to learn how you can create this app yourself, you can click the link in the description down below and watch that tutorial. And let me just open that folder over here. Here it is. Here is our project open. So let me just show you if I just say npm install, it's going to install all of our dependencies over here inside of our node modules folder. And to run this project, we're going to need node.js already installed in our system. So we have to first install node.js and then we have to do, you know, we have to clone this and we have to do npm install all of these things. But with Docker, I'll show you that you don't need to do any of these things. You just have to run one command and this app will be up and running. And great, it has installed. Let's say npm run dev and this will run our app. Click on this localhost 5173. And yep, you can see our greetings app is up and running. If you would like to build this app yourself, you can click the link in the description down below and watch my i18 next tutorial with React. So cool, let's kill this server. And now to containerize this application inside of Docker, what I'll do, I'll create a new file over here in the root of our fold, uh, folder. So Docker file. And this Docker file will contain the steps that we need to perform to run this application that we just now did. So first of all, we have to install Node.js, right? So I'll say from Node. And this Node over here is basically the official Node image from Docker, which we will select. Let's say if my Node version is, let me just search Node-V. My Node version is 20. So my Node uh, image is going to be this. So I'll say Docker Node image inside of over here we have a bunch of different node images over here right so i'm gonna choose 20 alpine because this is a lightweight node image that we can use into our project so i'll say 20 dash alpine okay now after this see docker image is basically an isolated environment right it's like an empty folder you can install things inside of it and you can create folders and stuff so what i will do i'll say working directory i'm going to create slash app folder inside of our docker image and then i will copy our package.json file package star.json so what this star basically means is anything starting with package so it can be package json it can be package log.json right so i'm going to copy this to dot so we're copying the package.json to the working directory over here. Over here, if let's say you're working with TypeScript and you want, then you want to copy like tsconfig.json and all, you can copy this over here as well. But since we don't have that, so we don't need it. So now simply what I'll do, I'll run npm install over here. So I'll say run npm 
install. This will essentially install all of the dependencies inside of our package.json file. So okay, everything has been installed. Now what I can do, I can just take everything inside of it and just copy it to our working directory. So I'll say copy from dot to dot, basically source and destination. But we don't want to copy this node modules folder, right? So I'll just create a new file over here called dot docker ignore. And here I can say node underscore modules because we don't want to copy the node modules. After this, after everything is copied, I'm going to say expose and then the name of the port. So what's the port over here? 5173. So our app runs on 5173, right? So I'll say expose port 5173 from that docker image. And then in the end, simply we can either do run npm run dev because that is what is required to run a react wheat setup right over here either we can say that or we can say cmd and we can add the command over here so i'm going to say npm comma run comma dev just like that and also we need to do one more thing over here in our package.json after this wheat script we need to add dash dash host to 0.0.0.0 so that it can run on any machine and over here we successfully written all of the steps that will be needed to run our react app so great let's just try to run this so simply for that i will have to first of all i'll have to build this image so i'll say docker build and i'm gonna give this a name or so i'll say dash t react dash app colon dev and where is our docker file located so it's located in this folder only right so i'll just say dot and let's run this and notice Make sure your Docker instance is running in the background. So you see, it's going to start performing all of our steps. It's taking the node image from its registry, that is node 20 image. And then it has set the working directory to app, copied our package JSON files. And now it's running npm install to install all of our dependencies. So our dependencies are being installed at this point. Okay, now it has done. So now it's going to copy everything from source to the destination and it is done. Great. Let's try to run this. So simply what I can say docker run dash p and so which port do we need to expose this one right 5173. So we need to take this port and inside of our system we can map it to some port. Let's say if you want to map it to 3000 we can run our app on localhost 3000 then but we're not going to do that. We're going to just map it to 5173 only and then we can specify what do we need to run what image do we need to run. So first of all before doing this I'm going to check our images so docker images and yep you can see this is our image that has been built if we go to our docker desktop over here you can see here's the image that has been built cool then let's try to run this i'm gonna say docker run and then we need to give the name of our docker image we can either say react app colon dev that we gave or we can just use this image id over here as well so let's just use this and try to run this and yep you can see our app is running let's click on over here and great our app is running successfully now, if you're enjoying this tutorial up until this point, open your Instagram app right now and search Roadside Coder and hit that follow button as hard as you can. Because I'm very active on Instagram and if you have any doubts, any queries or just a normal message, you can ping me on Instagram for this. So go on, do it. I'm waiting. What? I'm, I'm being serious over here. Open your Instagram app right now and follow me there. Oh, you've already done it? Okay, let's let's move on with this video. Okay, so now that we have our Docker image built over here, what we can do, we can either deploy it in on some cloud or we can click on over here and push to hub and you know share it with the world or share with anyone else who wants to run this in their local. You can go through the Docker docs to learn more about this. So if you go on over here and if you click on this publish your image, you can learn their guide over here it's very easy but now what we're going to do is we are going to publish it into a cloud we're not going to have to push it to any hub or anything we're just going to do it right here from our terminal and for that i'm going to use a tool called acorn and you can open that tool by clicking the link in the description down below so let me open it up as well and yep here it is so it's the simplest way to run and share your app and all it needs is a docker image to run it so if we click on login and quickly we have to sign in with github and anyone create an account on acorn for free with their github account so let's click on sign in and i'm in so our acorn account has been successfully created great let's go to the documentation and see how we can install acorn so if we click on over here cli installation and upgrade so since i'm using uh, windows we have to use something called scoop to install acorn 
okay let's first see how we can install scoop so i'm going to say install scoop and okay let's go over here scoop.sh so this is basically a command line tool for installing some dependencies so simply we have to copy both of these lines so let's copy it and make sure you run this in your powershell so i'll open a new terminal over here for powershell and paste both of them and let me just remove this uh, tag from here and press enter and yep you it shows that scoop is already installed yep it's already installed in my system okay let's close this let's install acorn now okay let's copy this and paste it over here scoop install acorn and this is also actually already installed in my system so it's gonna show i guess something like that okay it's uh in the already installed yep you can see cool then let's just uh Shut it down and yep, we're back in the same terminal. Let me just kill the server by pressing Control C. Or you can, uh, what you can do is you can go to Docker image, Docker desktop, I mean, and stop it manually from here. And I would suggest try to restart your VS Code for the changes to take effect. So let's see if the Acorn is installed successfully. So I'm going to say Acorn and press Enter. And if you see something like this, yep, Acorn is installed successfully. And now let's go back to our documentation of Acorn and. Uh, Let's click on authoring acorn if you go to overview. So you can see the primary goal of the acorn file is to quickly is and easily describe how to build, develop and run containerized application. So what we have to do next is we have to create a file over here called acorn file. Just like Docker file, we have to write some instructions over here on how we need to run our app. And it's very, very simple. I'll show you. So if we go back to docs, it says that we have to create uh, an object like this. So container and instead of this i'm gonna mention my app so i'll just create a container over here containers insert this object app and insert this app object what we have to do we have to build our app and push it to the cloud right so yeah let's see if they have given this name bar so now instead of it we have to use this build key so i'll say build and start this build i'm going to say context and it will be the current directory so dot after this after build i'm going to say port so what was the port of our application it was 5173 so i'll say publish inside the of double quotes i'm going to say 5173 slash http so you might be thinking how will i know what to write over here right so okay if we go back to these docs you can see we have this complete documentation where you can know how you can write the ports, what you need to expose in your app. And we have a bunch of different fields over here. Like for example, if you have any environment variables that you want to, you know, expose, then you can write them over here as well. So cool. And also one more awesome feature of this is, let me show you. I'm going to write if args.dev. That is, if this is in the development mode, if our app is in the development mode, then I will say D irs ters and instead of it i'll take it from the app directory to the current directory so what this will do is let's say our app is published to some url and you're in development mode so if you're going to make some changes in your file let's say if i go on over here and make some change in my app.jsx it is going to reflect that change into that published url as well in just a few seconds so I'll show you. So we have successfully created our account file over here. And if you want to learn more about it, how to you know add more things in the account file, definitely go and read more from this documentation over here. I will mention this in the description down below. So now simply what we have to do, first of all, we have to log in with Acorn. So I'll say Acorn login. And it's gonna go here. And since we have already logged in, it should uh, just pick that up. Yep, it's logged in. We can close it now. And in our CLI, you can see we have logged in successfully. Now, all we have to do to run our app is acorn run dash i dash n app. And where is our app? In the current directory dot. So if you press enter and oops, I've made a mistake over here. This will not be an object. Actually, if we go back to the docs. You can see it's just colon. And after that, you have to define your app. So I'll just... Uh, take it up there and this will be ports not port also one more thing make sure uh, to delete your node modules from over here i think it causes some problem while you know running this command 
So just try to, you know, right click and delete your node modules, which I have done over here. And let's, let's try to run this. Yep, you can see waiting for builder to start. Okay. And it has taken our Docker file inside of it. And it's doing whatever the instructions that I've given inside of this Docker file over here. Okay, exporting to image, pushing to layers. If we open our dashboard over here, you're going to see it's going to soon start reflecting that here as well. So let's just wait for it to finish. Okay, I think this should work. Let's go back to our dashboard and refresh. Yep, you see our image is successfully deployed over here. If you, we go back, you can see it has given us this link. I'm going to click on this follow link, open. And amazing, our app is successfully deployed on the cloud and you can just take this link and share it with the world, with whomever you like. So this is currently in the dev mode, right? So if you see over here, I ran it with the dash i tag. So dash i tag means it's in the dev mode. So over here, let's say if we want to make any change inside of our app, let's say in the app.jsx, um, over here, I'm going to say roadside coder. And let's save this. You're going to see. It's going to start syncing it in real time. And it's going to update our app over here. Yep, you see. And this is a deployed app. This is not a local app. You can share it, share it with anyone and they can also see these changes reflect in real time. But there's one problem over here that when you will shut down this server, this is going to shut down our image as well. It's because simply this was running in the dev mode. So let's just delete this dev image from here and let's deploy it for good. So I'll just remove this dash i tag and press enter. And okay, it has started building this and taken in our Docker file and Docker ignore file and started building our app. It's initializing a new pod for us. And yep, you see our apps link has been generated over here. If we click on and open, our app is successfully running. If we click on over here, yep, all of the functionalities of our app are working flawlessly. Great, and you can see our server is also not running. So that means this app is running for good. Now, if I go back to our dashboard, it's showing over here 1.9 hours until stop because we are currently using their free tier. And, but the good news is if you go on over here and click on change, you can see they have multiple different tiers over here. And the best part is that you can request the free beta access to their pro plan right now. But in the free or the personal tier as well, you can see we get a lot of benefits like max 4 GB total RAM for containers and other benefits as well, which are mentioned over here. So yep, definitely click the link in the description down below and check out Acorn. Also, if you want me to create a complete tutorial on Docker, you can let me know in the comments down below and I will bring a complete in-depth tutorial on Docker as well. So yep, that's it. If you like this video, give this video a huge fat thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more such awesome tutorials.